Your Excellency, thank you so much for joining CNBC. It's great to see you. Um, I want to ask you to just walk us through uh, what this new plan um, to spend as much as $6 billion uh, is going to look like, because my understanding from uh, officials in the UAE that I've spoken to is this all is part of a bigger strategy for the UAE. Absolutely. I mean, uh, first and foremost, uh, for us, it's always great being with the CNBC. Uh, and this is not something new for us. This is not a new strategy. So we launched this strategy in 2019, setting up a clear uh, vision of the CCI sector and how basically we believe it's a, it's a major uh, building point for us in 2019 for CCI to be a major contributor of GDP. Now we basically fast forward to where we are today. So a substantial amount of investment has already been done, uh, policy changes, uh, uh, our strategy has really kickstarted. What we announced the other day was that basically under the umbrella of the, the Department of Culture and Tourism, now we pretty much govern the entire CCR ecosystem here in Abu Dhabi with the integration of media and gaming, which is a major part of our CCI strategy. So now in a nutshell, we're bringing all the powers to be together with one unified vision and a unified path to, uh, to success. This is all taking place in what is now essentially a post-COVID economy um, globally, isn't it? How does that factor into this strategy? I mean, obviously the strategy from day one set the pace in job creation, set the pace in GDP contribution, and set the pace in basically societal contribution, uh, what we can uh, contribute to society. We've always believed from day one that culture and the creatives is the major building blocks of any growing society. And not just from an economic perspective, but easily, you know, from a, from a from a really DNA perspective, and that has been the DNA here in Abu Dhabi. Now, when we talk about from an economic perspective, it is how much we're investing in the sector in itself. So, over thirty billion dirhams, that is, we are going to be investing here, and this is basically a mixture of infrastructure. It's a mixture of incentives. It's a mixture of basically policy changes um, and stimulus packages. And the list and the list keeps going. So uh, we are really trying to support and expand this ecosystem here in Abu Dhabi. Um, we want Abu Dhabi to be the home of creatives. You, as you know, Ali, at the moment, the, the 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 Arab world is is the world of content consumption. It's all about content consumption. And we want to be in a position to basically be not just a content consumer, but to actually create content, all kinds of content, whether it's performing arts, visual arts, film, television, gaming. And we want Abu Dhabi to be the hub of that. Compounded by that, today in the Arab world, there's an amazing amount of creatives. It's how we can bring these people together under this umbrella, which is the Abu Dhabi CCI strategy. And you're seeing the building blocks of that already happening. I mean, this is a big, big example you have in one of our major investments on Yas Island, where we have the creative hub. This is bringing people from the world of media, gaming, film, and television all together with grade A infrastructure and a very strong net network that's going to connect them to each other. Uh, that in itself is going to create another 3,000 jobs over the next uh, two years, specifically in the media sector. So this is just one small example of many to come when we talk about job creation. At the moment, we have around 20,000 people working in the sector. We hope to bring in another 15,000 uh, to the sector over the next three to four years. When you think about that with regards to not just the job growth that you mentioned, but also um, the overarching vision, where are the opportunities for foreign investors? I mean, they're, they're quite immense, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, you have investments looking into specifically media, gaming, and television, which we're playing a very big role here. So not only have we basically built the infrastructure of, of uh, Kiosk Creative Hub, but we've started the development at the moment of the studio city here in Abu Dhabi, which will basically have everything from sound stages, virtual stages, will also bring a lot of business uh, to Abu Dhabi, but at the same time, create the infrastructure to allow either international or local uh, institutions to basically produce content, quality content here in Abu Dhabi all year long. And that's why the huge focus on virtual and uh, and sound stages here in Abu Dhabi. So there's and without a local partner, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. 
I mean, you have the opportunity to do one of both. And I think this is a sort of the discussion we had earlier on the policies that have happened over the 20, last 24 months that have get, make it easier for investors and creatives to call Abu Dhabi home, whether it's the long-term creative visa or the golden visa, whether it is the investment policies that you come down here, uh, the protection policies that protects you from, a, from an investment perspective. So much has been done to cater, uh, to make really Abu Dhabi in a, in, a, in a successful seat, to be honest with you. What happens next with regards to this sort of post-COVID economy? Because we're just a day or so away um, from the implementation of a move that would essentially see that um, shopping malls, restaurants, cafes, public places generally require um, a vaccination. How do you see that rolling out? It's a bit of a misconception. It doesn't really require a vaccination. So, the, of course, what's being proposed is you have the Al Hassan app. And then the Al Hassan app, of course, you have basically several. You have the green, the gray, and the red. So, yeah. to enter some of these spaces, you need to have a green. Now, a green means either you've done a PCR test on a certain period of time or you're vaccinated and you also have that into account. So, if you do not want to get vaccinated, of course, that's a choice everybody has. Uh, all you'd have to require is a PCR test up to a certain hours prior to, whether it's 48 hours prior to arrival to any of these places. And that in itself should give the populace whether it's a visitor coming from the outside or the local populace, the residents here in Abu Dhabi, a certain, certain security cloth around you, sort of comfort, knowing that you're in a restaurant that pretty much everybody around me is either vaccinated or has at least has had a PCR test in the last 48 hours. There's a certain comfort with that. I'm sure that comfort will make food taste better, will make shopping a little bit easier. So that's what we're trying to do here. It's all about the safety and the, the health safety of every individual within our institutions. How tough does it make um, the strategy when you still have a situation like, for example, the, the red designation from a country like the United Kingdom? Obviously, there are a, a heck of a lot of expats and tourists that come from the UK to the UAE, and many of them consider Abu Dhabi and Dubai their second home. Um, does this worry you at all? We talk about from a tourism perspective, as I said, we're evolving. We went from less than 10 green countries to over 20 at the moment and growing. Uh, while other countries are moving rapidly in basically vaccinations and really monitoring this this pandemic, it's made easier for both sides to basically find a hospitable and, of course, uh, secure solution for both for for both uh, you know for both countries. What the UK has done has been phenomenal. Their vaccinations uh, speed has been exceptional. I truly see major changes over the next couple of weeks to a month. We've seen changes in France and Switzerland. The announcements of basically having uh, green corridors between us and them. We've seen that with the U.S. So like I said, it's ever evolving. It's everybody has to go on their own pace. But at the end of the day, it's all about the health and security of its populace. Apparently, I've, uh, Abu Dhabi has just put the United Kingdom on the red list, their own red list. Is that just politics, do you think? We're going to see that situation. No, I, I, like I, said, I don't think it's politics. Like I said, <laughs> everybody wants to tread uh, you know, they want to tread lightly. The fact of the matter is nobody wants to see economic closures, whether it's in the UK or the US or the UAE, nobody wants to see that. And everybody wants to really control this pandemic. And every day you learn something more about this virus. You learn more about different variants. You learn about how the vaccines react to them and you make your decisions based on that. When you think about competition regionally, I've spoken to many Saudi officials on and off the record. They're working very diligently to obviously diversify their economy. They think that tourism and travel is going to be a huge portion of that um, diversification strategy. And it, it's really about, for them, many things, one of which is jobs. Do you see what they're doing in terms of their internal offerings as a competition to what you're doing in Abu Dhabi? You know, on the contrary, right? I've heard a lot of these sort of uh, remarks where do you see, for example, Dubai as competition. And I've always felt, and I think we always feel here, that's actually on the contrary, they're complementary. You know, we first tend to forget the distance, for example, between Abu Dhabi and Dubai, or even Abu Dhabi and Riyadh. There's such a small distance. I mean, Abu Dhabi, Dubai is a one hour by car. That's if you're driving slow. You know, and, you know, um, Dubai, uh, sorry, Abu Dhabi, Riyadh, that's an one hour, an hour and a half flight. It's not that far off. And the fact of the matter is, I think if you want to package something quite quite beautiful and really unheard of. You can do that with these opportunities. I mean, just look at Abu Dhabi in Dubai, whether it is packaging a trip where you can be at the Burj Khalifa, you could be at Dubai Mall, and at the same time, you could be at Warner Brothers, at the Louvre, 
You can be one of the most beautiful, pristine beaches on Saadiyat. So these packages are going to be very, very powerful moving forward. I see the same thing happen with Saudi Arabia, where tourists from all over the world want to come and see the beauty of Saudi Arabia. They want to see Al Ula. They want to see other, some of their other archaeological projects and beautiful historical projects. But at the same time, while because of the sheer proximity, they want to be at the Louvre Abu Dhabi, at the Sheikh Zayed National Museum, uh, at SeaWorld, and etc. So I do think complementary more than competitive. Your Excellency, we're going to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining CNBC.